Okay, today we're going to be talking about a couple of different concepts. Um, we're going to be talking about non-uniform torsion, and then we're going to be developing a model for shear stresses when you rotate uh, the cut section by some angle theta. So similar to what we did for bars and axial tension. So let's let's begin today by talking about non-uniform torsion. Okay. Now, if you remember from last time, the torsion formula gave us a relationship between the applied torque T and the uh, maximum shear stress. Uh, a few additional simple manipulations gives us this formula. And I'd encourage you to go to the written notes to see where this comes from if you don't know already. It's going to give us T L over G I sub rho. Okay, so this is just a variation on the torsion formula where we've, instead of using tau, we've replaced tau with its relationship to phi and just rearranged this equation slightly. Okay, so in non-uniform torsion, let's just take an example. Let's say we have something like this. Okay, something like that where there's a torque on this end, let's call it T1, and there's a torque here on this end, T2, another torque here, T3, and then finally a torque on this end, T4. So the question is, is given these non, this non-uniform loading, what's the what is the total phi that you end up with in this member? And so this follows the analogous approach that we used for non-uniform tension and compression where we have to do statics and make cuts. Um, we'll, we'll end up doing three cuts and solving for the internal torque and then using those four torques, or three torques, excuse me, we'll be able to sum up the fees to get the final result, okay? So what we're gonna end up with is the total fee will be equal to a sum, I equals one to N of phi I, which is equal to I equal one to N of T I L I over G I then the polar moment of inertia for the given cross section I sub rho I. Okay. All right. So in this case, but we're going to take a cut here. We're going to take a cut here. We're going to take a cut here and solve for the internal torque in each of those, for each of those cuts. Okay, so for the first cut, let me just draw a small version of this guy here. All right? We've got T1. T two T three and then this guy here let's put a couple of points here so we know where we are A B C D
Okay, so this torque here, the torque between points B and C is going to be equal to minus T1 minus T2. Okay, now we take the next cut, maybe a slightly shorter guy. I apologize, my pen's not working great this morning. T1, and we have T2, and then we've got this torque here between B, uh, excuse me, this, this should be between C and D. I apologize for that. This one here should be between B and C. And again, I wrote down the wrong equation up here. Sorry, I looked at the wrong section of my notes here. So T, C, D should be equal to minus T1 minus T2 plus T3. And then this guy should be minus T1 minus T2. And the last cut, it's just this little guy here, minus T1. And then T A B is equal to minus T one. Okay, so that's the statics for this problem. And so then the final answer would be phi is equal to T C D L C D over G C D I Rho C D plus the other two terms, terms of B, C, and A, B. And then you just add them up and that gives you phi. So this gives us the total angle of twist from left to right. Um, if you wanted to know the maximum shear stress that develops in each section, what you would do is you would determine the maximum shear stress in each of the segments individually and then take the maximum value. Okay. Now, what if we have something like, let's say this, where we have a bar that has a continuously varying cross section and let's say it has a continuously varying torque, okay? Let's say we have a, a continuously varying torque T. So this is going to be a little t, and it's going to be a function of position x, okay? How do we do that? Well, just as before, rather than a sum on n segments, we're going to do an integral. So V is going to be the integral from 0 to L. Or let's say this is L. 0 to L of D V, which is equal to the integral 0 to L. And then t is a function of x, l is replaced by dx, g, we're saying the material is constant, and then the moment of inertia 
polar moment of inertia is also going to be a function of x. Okay, and so you'd have to do a little bit of calculus to figure out, for example, i rho sub x. I don't, I don't really focus on the problems that involve a lot of calculus in this course because each student kind of has a different background, but it's important to be aware that these non-uniform conditions can be written in integral form as well. Okay, so the next thing, the next topic that we need to discuss is if you think about bars in, in uh, like if we think about what we did first, which was you have a bar and then you just put some load P um, like this. This is the first problem that we considered. If you take a little material element out and look at the stresses on this guy, right, you end up with your stress sigma x like this. Right? And then we and then and then we said, okay, well what happens if you rotate the material element some angle theta, right? And we wrote down some equations that do this transformation. So given this maximum sigma x at an angle theta, you could figure out the stress and strain um, on every face of the element. Okay, so this is what we did before. So what we want to do now is the exact same thing, but for the setup of a bar in pure torsion. So what we want to do now is we want to take a bar with a circular cross section and applied torque uh, T and then cut a little material element out and examine, right, we have a little material element. We want to examine the tau's, the shear stresses that cause the change in shape. So these are our tau's. Okay. All right, so this is pure shear. Notice that in the case of pure shear, you have nothing but shear stresses. There's no normal stresses. And so like we did before, we want to ask the question, okay, if I take that material element that starts out in pure shear and rotate it in angle theta, what are the resulting shear and normal stresses. So I want to point out, just so you understand, that this is the exact same concept. We're just starting from a different starting point. In this case, we just start with sigma x and then do a rotation theta. Here we start with, with what's called pure shear and do a rotation theta. Later in the class, we're going to unify all of these concepts under one theory called plane stress, where you won't have to remember these individual approaches. You'll just have to remember one, one approach, which I think is more productive. Okay, so in the pure shear case, so for pure shear, if we start with pure shear, Okay, so we're going to part, start with pure shear. Then the equations for the normal and shear stress at an angle theta look like this. And tau theta is going to be equal to tau cosine. Theta. Okay, so these are 
these equations are actually very similar to the ones we derived. They just assume that we're starting with a pure shear condition. Right, and so again, looking for maxes and mins of shears, we can go ahead and plot just like we did before. So we have minus pi over four, uh, excuse me, pi over two, minus pi over four, pi over four, two, I guess it's going to be tau, minus tau, okay, and so, um, let's see, we end up with the, uh, this guy looks something like this, okay, so that's, Sigma, theta, and then this guy kind of looks like this. Okay, and that is tau theta. So you can see it, it is expected in the pure shear case. At, at theta equals zero degrees, there's no normal stress. It's all shear. But notice as we rotate, pi over 4, this is a key point, at minus, plus or minus pi over 4, there's no shear stress, and everything now is normal stress. Okay, so that's, so the maximum shear stress occurs at theta equals 0, but the maximum normal stress occurs at pi over 4. And um, so what I would encourage you to do is to check the written notes for a few examples. Of, check the written notes for examples of how to use those equations for different cases and just become familiar with using those equations. Again, I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis on these particular specialized equations for pure shear because in a few weeks we're going to develop a set of equations that subsumes everything we've learned so far. So you, you can really just learn those, frankly, and, and you'll be fine. Okay, so there's a couple of just little details that I want to make you aware of. Again, these aren't big things, but just for completeness. A few small details. If, so if you're at theta equal to zero degrees, okay, then you can determine the maximum shear strain is just going to be equal to tau over g, okay? So if you're given tau, you're at theta equals zero degrees and you're given tau, okay, the pure shear stress, and you know g, you can determine gamma max. And then likewise, at theta equal to 45 degrees, remember at 45 degrees we know that there's no shear stress and everything has been transferred into normal stress. And so in that case, the maximum normal strain at 45 degrees is equal to gamma over two. Okay, so these are just some simple relations that, that you can remember. Okay. And then the last point that I'd like to make is just this relationship between G and E. So G and E are not independent parameters, but in fact, they can be related to one another through the following formula. And if you want more information on how, where this formula comes from, you can refer to the book 
Um, I don't think it's terribly important to remember the details. So this is the shear modulus of elasticity, Young's modulus of elasticity, and Poisson's ratio. Okay, so to summarize what we've learned so far, we took a look at the non-uniform torsion case, okay, and we used this derivative form, this uh, derived formula from the torsion formula that relates angle of twist to applied torque T. And then we noticed that we could either break it into a sum or we could break it into an integral depending on the nature of the changes in the cross section and the applied loads. And then we moved to this idea of pure shear. Okay, so this is called pure shear. Okay, and if you have a bar and it's loaded with torques through the centroid and it's a circular cross section, that's going to engender what we call a pure shear stress state. And so this gives us another starting point to examine um, what happens when we rotate through angles theta. And so we derived some equations here that kind of give you that relationship between the original pure shear state tau and some angle theta, and then the resulting shear and normal stress. Again, I want you to keep, I want you to remember that these are special cases of something we're going to learn in a few weeks. It's much more general, and I think more productive to remember in detail. And then uh, I would encourage you to just go through the written notes for some examples, some commentary, and then there's just a few other small details for max uh, shear strain and max shear uh, normal strain.